Father, thank you for the blessing of your word. Bless us in these few moments that we have together. Guide us by your spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Psalm 18. Psalm 18. Verse 28. For thou wilt light my candle. The Lord my God will enlighten my darkness. Amen. Thou will light my candle and the Lord my God will lighten my darkness. So a candle is to light up the darkness. Amen. And God has called us to be lights in darkness. Amen. Can you hear me clearly? You sure you can hear me? Can you see me clearly? Are you listening to what I'm saying? Are you going to do what I'm saying? Or is it just something that we are just having? You sure? Okay. All right. Matthew chapter 4. And leaving Nazareth, he came and dwelt in Capernaum, which is upon the sea coast, in the borders of Zabalon and Nephthalim, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken that by Isaiah the prophet, saying, the land of Zabulon, all right, the land of Nephthalim, by the way of the sea beyond Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles. The people which sat in darkness saw great light. They saw a great light. Amen. And to them which sat in the region and shadow of death, light is sprung up. So you can see here, but I cannot see the screen. All right. You can see here. Um, the scripture which says that the people which sat in darkness saw what? A great light. They saw great light. Amen. And to them which sat in the region and shadow of death, light is sprung up. Amen. So you can see that God why has this screen gone off? Are you working on it? Is, it? is there a special reason? I'm sure somebody is working on it. Oh, really? Where's the projector? Down there? Yes. I hope I'm not causing too many troubles. <laughs> All right. So, let's go back to our scripture. That means put it back on the screen. Okay. The people which sat in darkness saw a great light. Isn't it true? Uh, Go to the verse before. The land of Zabulon and the land of Nephthalim by the way of the sea beyond Jordan. This is why we need to go to Israel. You see, you understand these words in all these places. They are all places. The land of Zabulon and Nephthalim by the way of the sea. Yes. Beyond Jordan. It's not really a sea, but it's a, it's a lake, but they call it a sea. Beyond Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles. All right? And it says that, uh, verse, the next verse, the people which sat in darkness, you know, saw a great light. A great light. 
People were sitting in darkness. People were lost and they were sitting in the shadow of death. When you are in the shadow of something, you are near the thing. If This is my shadow here. So if you are he's in my shadow, you are near me. But these guys are not in my shadow. Because they are not near me. You see, so this is my shadow. Can you see my shadow? Yes. Where's my shadow starting? Somewhere there. So it's coming. My shadow is coming. My shadow is coming. My shadow. Once you sit in my shadow, it means you are near me. So when the people sat in the shadow of death, it means that they were very near death. Yes. And to such people, a light is sprung up. That's why we call it a candle in the dark. Yes. A candle in the dark. Amen. So this is a prophecy of Jesus Christ. And this is your destiny. Amen. It's to be a Christian. It's to be like Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And uh, this is uh, beautiful and um, wonderful. And um, I believe that God has a great blessing for you. Now, Isaiah chapter 9. Now, when we go to Israel, and I want the first love church here to have a good reason to go to Israel for a tour. How many would like to go for a tour? Just the first love church in the UK. Because, because when the group is large, it is not nice. Israel is not enjoyable with a lot of people. You have to be small enough to talk and share. When you are a lot of people, this one is walking slowly, this one is in the bus, this one hasn't had breakfast, this one is now coming. It's not nice at all. I hear, I, I, heard, I heard there was a group that went, 500 people, and they were like, um, so many buses. But if you go to Israel, you have to go for, with a reason. You have to see Zabulon and Capernaum and the land which sat in darkness where a great light arose. Uh, so these are the places the things that we need to see and the things we need to hear amen. amen so in Isaiah but we need to have a good reason to go we can't just go sightseeing making having fun there's enough fun in the world on television we need to have a good reason and I think that if the first love church in the UK are more than 5,000 people, because I know there's more than 1,000 people here, but if we are more than 5,000 people, first lovers, then I think that it is a good reason to celebrate in Israel. What do you think? Is it a good? Because we can't, we can't just go for nothing. We need young people, 5,000 of them saved. Yes, and there's more than 5,000 around who don't know they are left from their right. Amen. So, do you think we can have a good reason? So, you think about it. I'll make an agreement with you. And uh, if you are able to achieve it, then that's it. We will be, we will go to, we will go, I'll walk with you through the valley of Kidron. Do you know the valley of Kidron? Yeah. I'll take you there. That's where Jesus walked through. Yeah. When he was going from Get, Get Hermione all the way to Kepha's house. I'll take you to Kepha's house. From there we'll go to Pilate. And then from there we'll go to the Calvary. How many want to see Calvary? You see, these are words, you, you, you know them better. Yeah. Isaiah chapter 9. So think about it. I'm sure by the end of the camp, you'll be sure whether you want to go or not. 
Isaiah chapter 9 verse 1 verse 1 nevertheless the dimness shall not be such as was in her vexation when at the first he lightly afflicted the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali and afterward did more grievously afflict her by the way of the sea beyond Jordan in Galilee of the nations all right now notice verse 1 it says nevertheless her dimness the dimness shall not be such as was in her vexation the dimness is the level of darkness there are levels of darkness how many know that there are levels of darkness sometimes it's dark but you can see sometimes it's dark 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 and then there is black darkness which is quite you can't even see your hand and you stay away you put your eyes on for a long time still you are not seeing that's really deep darkness and for those who are who watch the stars and the planets we have what we call light pollution that then when there are lights around even though it's dark it, it pollutes the sky because you need darkness to see the stars because the stars are right there but the sun's brightness wipes out all the stars you can't see them all right so darkness it says the dimness shall not be such as was in her vexation so the level of darkness was not going to be was will not be like that level then verse 2 the people that walk in darkness have seen a great light so this is the prophecy that is being fulfilled in matthew when jesus came from isaiah chapter 9 it was quoted in matthew chapter 4 are you with me all right and the people that walk in darkness have seen a great light and they that dwell in the shadow of death upon them hath the light shined all right now when the light comes what happens verse 3 thou hast multiplied the nation and not increased the joy they joy before thee according to the joy in harvest as men rejoice when they divide the spoil for thou hast broken the yoke of his burden and the staff of his shoulder the rod of his oppressor as in the day of Midian for every battle of the warrior is with confused noise and garments rolled in blood but this shall be with burning and fuel of fire for unto us a child is born for unto us a child is born and unto us a son is given you recognize these verses somehow yeah these are verses in the bible about jesus and the government shall be upon his shoulder and his name shall be called wonderful counselor the mighty god the everlasting father the prince of peace of the increase of his government and peace there shall be no end and upon the throne of david and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever the zeal of the lord will perform this the lord sent a word into jacob and it hath lighted upon israel amen, amen. now how many of you are recognizing some of the words yeah that is talking about jesus so you can see from isaiah chapter 9 from verse 1 he says the dimness will not be as you thought and then in verse 2 he starts to talk about and mention the areas where the great light is going to come 
Now there are towns and places in the world and cities in the world where you are going to go and that city is waiting for you. You see, this place, put it back there in verse 2, is telling us the places. You know, a great light has shined. I think it's in verse 1. Mentioning the names of the place. Yes, the land of Zebulon and Naphtali. You know, in Galilee. It's quite specific. This was like hundreds of years before Jesus came. Yes. Hundreds of years before Jesus came. He prophesied not only about the light, but the place that would receive the light. Like this country, this town, this place, this city, these people. They are going to have light. So there are places that are waiting for you to come. Look, we are not here. If you are here to solve your personal problems, as soon as we close this first session, you can pack your things and go away. You get it? You know, God has shown me how to solve personal problems. Solve personal problems by just moving on and continuing to look for God. Your personal weights and burdens will never end. You can ask the grown-ups. You can ask your parents. You can ask them to tell you. Parents advise only up to a point. They don't say most of their problems. Some of your mothers and fathers, I tell you, they were disco lovers and boogie boogie kings and queens. But they don't say everything. You get what I'm saying? Because they can't say everything. They can only say a part. A part that is appropriate as a grown-up and a parent. You know? The problems they have, they don't really say, they haven't really said it all. You get what I'm saying? But there have been so many problems. Because I've been a pastor of some of your parents. I know, I know the things. We are, oh, we've been around for a long time. It's not been easy. You get it? Yeah, so we, problems don't really go away. Yeah, they don't really go away. They, they are solved, they are managed, they are controlled. And in spite of them, we work for God. So I don't really believe in sitting here to do career counseling, how to your career, your future, your job, your money, your days, your financial, your problem, this, that. Look, even your pornographies and all this. And look, let's focus on the work. You see that they, they, when a tree dies or dies, the leaves themselves fall off. Wow. You don't have to speak to leaves. I say, come down, just die. And the leaf will <laughs> fall down by itself. All right? So if you feel, if you are really concerned about your personal life, or who you will marry, who you will do this, who that, look, as you serve God, all these problems have their way of being solved. If you focus on them, it rather becomes bigger and you become more confused and more anxious. And the more anxious you become, the uglier you are. The less attractive you are. People don't employ you. People don't like you. People don't choose you. Because we can see a worried person. Say, if they marry you, they are just marrying problems. Yes. Being in a relationship with you is a project. It's not something to enjoy. It's a project. It's a burden. It's a mountain. It's a valley. It's a hill. It's a valley. Hey. So, let us rather consider the way of the sea, the Galilee, the land of the Gentiles that are sitting in darkness. And as we do, all these things shall be added to us. Amen. All right. Are you putting this screen back on? Have I done something wrong? I want it to come. Huh? Come and do it. We have time. I need it. I need it to work. When we take a short break, you can correct any other thing. But do it now. Whatever you need to do. Amen. Amen. Right. So let's see the effect of the light. And I'm saying that there is a town. There is a place waiting for you. To come and be a light. Amen. Amen. Back to the verse on the screen, please. Nevertheless, yeah, Naphtali, 
Zebulon. They are going to see a light. Beautiful. Verse 2. People that walk in darkness. People that walk in darkness. People that walk in darkness. There are many people in darkness. How many have been in darkness? A young person like you. In darkness. How much more somebody who is 30 years old? And 40 years old. Can you imagine the darkness? Huh? I tell you, if you cry, you've seen darkness. How much more somebody who is 30, who is 40, and then 50? That's why they become quiet. It's the darkness, the difficulties. But people that sit in darkness see a great light. All right? And those that sit in the shadow, in the land of the shadow of death, shadow of death, death is nearby just one second from death many people don't know that death is very close very close recently we had some young guys they went swimming and then they just in just one second they were dead they were dead yeah one just like that just in the sea atlantic ocean it was so fast. Swimmers. One was a swimmer, one was not. So, death can be very close. And when death is close, you don't even know that it's close. Yeah. Because God keeps us from knowing when death is coming. Because if you knew you're going to die on Tuesday or Friday, you not be happy today. At least you are happy today, isn't it? And you go up to Tuesday. You are flowing. And so there's there's no problem. You can at least be happy this week or next week or whenever. You get it? Because it's not good to know you're going to die. And that's why God protects us. And He says that just prepare to meet me at any time. Yeah. It's not a good thing. People who know they are going to die, they really suffer. They suffer, they die a thousand deaths before they actually die. They go through their funerals, they go through their wakekeepings, they go through the tributes, they go through what people will say, what will happen, all the spirit. They, they live through it. They tremble, they fear in the night, in the day. I know what I'm saying. Yeah. Before they actually die. It's not a small thing. They think of their enemies who come to see them dead. They say, No, I don't want this person to see me dead. 